guys, I'm Sushmita from Miss Pink Shoes and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I edit my videos. So a lot of you have asked me to do this tutorial and I'm so sorry it took me so long. But I wanted to perfect my editing skills to a point that I was okay with sharing it. So I think I've gotten to that point where I'm really comfortable editing and I know what I'm doing. So yes, that's why I'm finally doing this video for you guys. So before I get into the video, I want to make a couple of things clear and tell you guys a couple of things. So the software that I use for editing is called Final Cut Pro which is available officially only for Mac and before this I used to use iMovie which is again only available for Mac but there are a lot of pirated versions easily available on Torrid and a lot of my friends have downloaded and have been using it and they've not had any issues so I would highly suggest going with uh, FCP directly you don't have to start with iMovie and then get to FCP because the controls are exactly the same and in Final Cut Pro you get a lot of inbuilt customization properties which you won't find in any other software so the reason why I would suggest FCP to you guys is because it is super user friendly. It is very, very, very easy to use. You can just spend like a day or two with the software, look up a couple of tutorials on the basics and I'm sure you can do a decent job by the third day because it is that simple. The next thing that there are a lot of customizations available. So they have a lot of inbuilt transitions, they have effects, they have a lot of text uh, coming in. So basically you can do a lot of customizations with FCP. Third thing is that a lot of plugins available easily for FCP so if the inbuilt stuff is not enough you want to be more creative you want to do something at a higher level which is where I'm getting to right now you can download a lot of plugins which basically help you in getting the kind of result that you want so that is the reason why I suggest FCP and honestly guys it is super fast it works really well and will make your process so much simpler and give you professional results so yes this video is not going to be a basics of FCP or how to edit a video in general I'm going to be showing you guys how I edit my videos so that you get an idea of the kind of style that I do so mostly in my comments this is a question that I get asked a lot that how do I edit my video and a lot of people who use the same software but don't get the kind of results that I do see honestly guys it basically depends on your creativity and how you use it and there's small small things that you have to take care of which is something that I do which I feel makes a lot of difference uh, for example like sometimes when I speak I fumble so I make sure that I cut and remove those areas and sometimes before I start speaking I stammer and I'm like uh, uh, like I take time to think so I edit all of those bits out that not only makes my video sound a lot better and makes me sound professional but it makes my video very cut uh, crisp and clean and basically it makes the whole video very professional looking so there are a lot of small small things that I take care of and those are the things that really help in the longer run so yes with all of that being said if you'd like to know how I edit my videos then please keep on watching so the first thing that I do is open up the folder where all of my clippings are and keep it ready. Then I'm going to open Final Cut Pro which is my editing software. It takes a couple of seconds to open up and when you open it up it looks something like this. So I'm just going to click on new project, type the name of the project and my timeline is going to look like this. So I'm opening the folder where all my clippings are and I'm just going to drag and drop them into my timeline. So since I'm recording my screen guys, my laptop is being a little slow, generally it's a little faster. So these are all of my clippings that I've recorded. So what I'm going to do is cut the excess clipping, I just did that quickly. And I'm reducing the size of my timeline, selecting all the clippings and I'm right clicking on the mouse, selecting new compound clip and I'm selecting on OK. So now the whole thing is going to be one single clipping, I don't have any small clippings in between. So now comes removing of the green backdrop. So I'm going to go to the effects panel, click on keying and there's an effect called keyer. So I'm just going to drag and drop that onto my clipping and boom, the backdrop is gone. It's a clear backdrop and I can basically add any backdrop that I like. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Safari and go to Google and basically type in whatever backdrop I need. So I'm just going to try a couple of backdrops and see what looks the best onto the video. And this takes a little time guys. Sometimes you find the backdrop immediately. Sometimes you have to try like a 
hundred of them and you're still not satisfied so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag and drop the backdrop that I downloaded I'm expanding my timeline I'm making the clipping a little bigger of the backdrop and what I'm gonna do is go on to transform in the video panel and I'm basically gonna make the backdrop as big as I want it to be so that it fits my screen perfectly and I'm just minimizing the screen and making sure that my backdrop is not bigger than my screen otherwise I'll have issues later so I like the backdrop but I'm not fully satisfied so I'm going back to Google downloading a few more backdrops and seeing what works the best with me so I kind of like this backdrop and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it around to a horizontal position because it was a vertical one and I'm basically just going to make sure that I place it well into my video and it's size to the size that I want. So now I like this, I'm going to stick to this. So I'm just going to go to blur effect and put Gaussian blur onto my backdrop but I'm going to reduce the amount of it so this will basically just give a little bokeh effect it will just give a little blurring to the backdrop and it'll make me stand out a little more otherwise the backdrop is going to look too stark and too in your face so now I'm just extending the clipping to make sure that it is the backdrop for my entire video. So I'm just pulling it, putting it right at the beginning of my video and expanding it till the end. So as long as you expand it for, that's how long the clipping is going to be for you. So I'm just reducing it and making sure it's the exact size of my video. So now there's a small problem that comes up with green screening which I'm going to show you guys. So if I'm going to expand my video, you can see around my hair it's just being a little weird and awkward and the cutting hasn't happened well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click onto my video, go to the key or effect panel, go to match tools and there's something called soften. So when you increase that, the edges of the cutting is going to be softened. So I'm just going to make it a lot more and show you guys so you can see how blurred my hair has become. So I'm just going to bring it down to like 1.5 or 1.7, that's all that's required. And then I'm going to go to color selection and reduce it down only to all of the green areas because you don't want to reduce any other color from the video apart from green. So I'm just going to reduce my selection and make sure that I restrict it to green alone. And with that we have our clipping ready. Again I'm selecting both the clippings and converting it into a single compound clip so it makes it easier for us to edit. So now what I'm going to do is go to the audio section and I'm going to increase the audio to 6 or 7 because I want it to be louder than what it is. Then I'm going to go to audio enhancements and click up on background noise removal. This will really remove a lot of background noise from your video. And now coming to the actual editing of the video. So what I'm going to do is run through my entire clipping and cut and remove all of the excess. This is the main thing that I do because this will really help in making your editing process much simpler. So as in when you go, just cut the clippings and keep them aside whatever you need and whatever you don't need, I just like to delete it immediately. So now the selection that I am making, I'm just cutting it out and I don't need this, I'm just deleting it out. So this will really help in making your process much simpler. So that's exactly what I'm going to do throughout the entire clipping. So wherever I'm speaking or talking won't be changed, that will be exactly as it is. So I'm just running through it, listening to whatever I'm saying, if I'm saying the right things. And then I'm just stopping right where my voice ends, making a cut. And the following clipping is where I'm doing the procedure but I don't need any voice from it. So I'm just going to cut it out, reduce the volume to zero, go to fast and make it into two. So that will just make the clipping much faster and make the video shorter. So as you can see, whatever I'm doing has become fast forwarded and the clipping which is after where I've done nothing is at the usual pace with the background sound. So now this is what I'm going to do for the entire video guys. This takes about 20 to 25 minutes, sometimes even half an hour depending on the length of the video. But yeah, this is the most important step because you don't want anything unnecessary coming in your video. You don't want any background sound coming. You don't want to make your video really long. So this is extremely important. I'm going through the entire clipping, cutting and removing all of the excess. Wherever I'm doing the makeup but I don't want any voiceover, I'm reducing the volume to zero and making it fast forward. And wherever I'm speaking is going to be at the same pace. 
So when it comes to fast forwarding your video guys, you want to make sure that you don't overdo it. So places where I'm doing my eyeliner, my mascara, I do it really slowly. So I can fast forward that to into 4. But places where I'm blending my foundation or putting on some powder, I don't want to make it too fast because it will look awkward and we prick the eye. So I fast forward it to into 2. So make sure that your fast forward is in collaboration with the video and you don't overdo it or underdo it. Otherwise your video is going to be a little too fast or a little too slow. So now I'm done deleting all the extra clippings and I'm going to my intro clipping which I shoot at the end. So I'm just deleting that clipping from there and bringing it to the beginning of my video because that's when the intro comes of course. And again what I'm going to do is reduce the sound of this to zero because I don't need any sound from this. And I'm again cutting all the expressions and the actions that I like and whatever I don't like or are the in between actions from one to the other, I'm just going to delete and remove them. So this takes a little time guys because I don't want my intro to be bad, I want my intro to be as neat and nice as possible. So I'm just going to cut out all of the extra clippings and remove them so I only have the clippings that I need. So now while taking my intro, there are portions that I like. So this is an expression that I like and I want to use it as my thumbnail. So I'm just going to take a screenshot of this so that my thumbnail is also done. And now comes adding the music. So I'm going to go on to YouTube and I'm going to go to a channel called No Copyright Sounds which is where I take all of my music from. So I listen to whatever new they have and whatever I like, I download that. So I go to youtube.mp3.org and I download the sound. So this basically downloads any YouTube video's music. It does not download the video. So again, I'm dragging and dropping the music onto my timeline. And this is a very crucial step guys because you want your music to match with your video. So the beginning of my video always has a transition called cross dissolve which basically fades the video into the screen. I It starts from a black screen and that's how I like it. So now I'm just adjusting the music according to the video. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my clipping and make it fast forward or slow depending on the pace of the music. So currently it requires to be slow motion but not too slow. So I'm just making it slow to 70% not 50%. So this is what my video is going to look and sound like. So that was just a small example but you can see how when the sound fades in is when the video fades in and at every beat change of the music my video clippings are going to change. So when you edit your video clippings according to the sound it makes it a lot more appealing. So now what I'm going to do is delete all the extra clippings. And I'm going to open up a folder on my desktop which is called Video Essentials which has all of my accessories which I need for my video. And I'm going to drag and drop my logo animation which is there in every single video of mine. Again, I'm dragging and dropping cross dissolve because I want it to fade from my face to the video. It looks very appealing. So again, I'm also editing the logo animation according to the sound, stopping where I want it to end cutting off the excess and again I'm going to take cross dissolve and put it there so it fades from my logo animation to my face. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the music and where my voice starts, where I start to speak, I'm going to reduce and the previous clipping I'm just going to fade it out a little. So what happens is that when the logo animation fades into me, the music will also fade to a much lower pace. And now I'm just listening to my voice along with the music and seeing whether it makes sense and whether I can hear myself and all of those things. So now comes the part where I add transition between my clippings. So there is a transition called page curl which basically looks like what page is turning. And this is a transition you will find in every single video of mine because I like it the most and it makes it look very neat. So yes, I'm just putting it after every single step. Say for example, I put a foundation and after that I'm going to put a concealer. So in between both the steps, I put this transition. It just makes my video a lot more organized and I just love the output it gives to my video. So now I'm just scrolling towards the end of my video. So when I finish the procedure and I get to my outro, 
and when I uh, from my intro get to the part where I'm starting my makeup I use a different transition which is in the stylized section it is called color reveal so I'm just dragging and dropping that there and then I'm going to go to the end of my video and I'm going to go to something called fade to color which basically fades the video to black so the end of the video will also be faded out to a black screen which makes it look basically very very professional now coming to editing the intro so I'm going to add in the transitions that I like sometimes it takes 5 minutes sometimes it takes half an hour it really depends on the kind of makeup look you've done the kind of music that you have if I have a music which has a lot of you know beat change going up and down I like to add in a lot of dissolves and fades but with my music today the light effects were going in really well so I'm trying on a couple of effects there are times where it does not look nice there are times where it does so I'm just going through the clippings I'm seeing what transition works where and right now I'm struggling to find a transition for that particular clipping so I'm just gonna go through all of the transitions that are available drag and drop whichever looks nice and then I'm just gonna play around with this so this totally depends upon your creativity guys how you use it and how you work with it and it takes a little time to get used to this but once you're used to this it's not gonna be too hard a task So finally I found a transition that works for me and with that I'm pretty much done editing my intro as well. So now comes the part where I add my social media icons onto my intro. So I already have these designed onto a transparent backdrop on Photoshop. So I'm just going to drag and drop them and then there's something called a swish sound effect which basically sounds like something is sliding into the video. I downloaded this from YouTube. I'll leave a link in the description box below. So I'm just adjusting that and then I'm just adjusting the size of these clippings. So you can basically just go to transform and edit the size and place it exactly where you want to place it. You can place it on the sides, top, bottom. I like keeping it in the center front so that's exactly where I'm keeping it. And now I'm going to put the cross dissolve effect towards the end of the video. In the beginning of the video, I'm going to delete the effect and I am going to put in a transition called slide because I want my social media icons to slide in. So at the end, I've added cross dissolve, but in the beginning, I'm adding slide. And I am reducing the size of the transition to 04 or 03 because I wanted to quickly just slide into the video. Now I'm just going to pick up the sound and match it exactly where my icons are so they all happen at the same time. So now as you can see it's slided in from the same direction. I want the Facebook to come from the right and the Instagram to come from the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Instagram clipping go on to the effect and slide it in from the left so now when my icons are sliding in they both come from different directions now going to the outro where i say thumbs up all the time and i want two thumbs ups to come on either sides of me so i'm again dragging and dropping that from my video essentials panel and i'm also dragging in a sound effect called ding so basically when my thumbs up comes up it will just have that ping sound coming in which just makes it sound nice so again i'm just cutting out the portion where the voice is and deleting the excess of the audio clipping i'm going over the thumbs up icon and i'm going to resize that because it's obviously too big so i'm going to transform resize it to whatever size i wanted to placing it on the side because i want it to be on either sides of me and then what i'm gonna do is cut it to the point where i want it so i'm first placing it exactly where i say thumbs up and then i'm just cutting all the excess out then i'm gonna copy paste this because i want two thumbs ups coming up so i'm just gonna paste one over the other and i'm just taking this on the other side and i'm doing a mirror image of it so i get two thumbs up facing each other So now when I talk, it's going to come up like that. And finally, adding the subscribe button animation, which is there towards the end of my video. So this is also there on YouTube. I downloaded it from there. So if you can see, it's in a green backdrop. So I'm just going to go over to my effects panel again, going to keying, picking out key or dragging it and dropping it onto my subscribe. And then what I'm going to do is go on to the video panel, 
go to transform and reduce the size and basically twist and turn it around in a way that it looks appealing with my video and I want it to come from the right corner this time so I'm just twisting it and placing it onto the right corner to a point where it looks appealing. Then I'm going to go to transitions, pick and drop cross dissolve because I want it to fade in and fade out. So I'm just going to show you what the entire thing looks like. So that's my thumbs up and that's my subscribe coming in and fading out. So we are finally done editing the video and I'm just going to go to share, click on Apple 4K devices and I'm just going to open up the folder where I want to save it and I'm just going to click on OK. Now I'm going to go to window and background tasks so here I can see the percentage at which my video is sharing and basically with that I am done. So that's it for this video guys, I really hope this comes in use to you especially if you're a beginner or if you're somebody who wants to get into YouTubing or filmmaking, I really hope this video helps you guys and if it did don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, the link is down below, you can also follow me on my Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat and Twitter, all the links are given in the bottom bar and I'll see you soon in my next video. Thank you so much for watching guys, bye.